Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex, and today we have the brand new character, Victorious, to take a look at, and I'm going to explain to you guys how you should most effectively go about ranking her up, possibly tier 2-ing her in anticipation for Doctor Doom, and then we're going to go into some build ideas and suggestions because this character brings about a lot of new ideas and frankly is extremely unique uh, and then we're going to get into some gameplay action so first of all you unlock the character at one star by getting the what well, i did at least by getting the bio subscription which allows you to select the character every day for 30 days now if you don't go about uh collecting the character that way you're gonna have to first unlock the character through the epic quest now just like colossus while this character does appear to be strictly paywall or strictly kind of real money purchase only it's true that you can also get the character's biometrics as a shifter. So in the deluxe mission, I know this costs crystals, but it's not real money. Uh, if you collect the uh, uh, deluxe mission for Sue Storm and you unlock the special mission, which unlocks whether you have 1% done of the epic quest or 100% done, then you can start collecting bios of Victorious right away because the shifter allows you to either get one of two hero kind of um, companion uh, ally shifters, human torture the thing, and or one uh, kind of enemy villain shifter in Victorious. Now, if you don't get Victorious as a shifter, you can just close the app, don't finish the mission, open up your app again, basically restart the game, uh, and then try again. You won't lose your energy, you won't lose your attempt, because you only have two attempts per day, uh, and then you can farm a minimum of two bios per day. Now, I think you can also get some of her bios from the Twisted World missions, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, so that could be a possibility of like four or five bios a day, minimum two bios a day. Now, two bios a day is really brutal. I'm not saying that it's gonna be a walk in the park, but we've done this before, guys. We have the Clea missions where she's a shifter. Uh, we've experienced this before, but as a lot of you know, if you have rank up tickets or if you have, let's say, a mega rank up ticket, now is definitely the time or to not only the time to use it, but the time to consider using it. And of course, they've given us a way to farm a mega rank up ticket for free. So you can start on that and start finding those locations and grinding out those uh, different parts uh, if you intend to use a mega rank up ticket on Victorious. I don't have a mega rank up ticket, so I'm going to have to go ahead and use regular rank up tickets. But I've been lucky enough through login events through playing the game for a long time and through um, kind of token events where they allow you to exchange tokens for rank up tickets and also my boost point sub that I get every month uh, has been giving me a lot of two and three star tickets lately. I have enough tickets individually that they add up to a mega rank up ticket as you can see uh, and so I can basically imitate or mimic the mega rank up uh, function without actually um, using a mega rank up ticket. Now, from here, once you get the character to six stars, you essentially have two decisions. The first decision is that if you're collecting the BIOS subscription, you can continue to collect BIOS every day, and about 20 days later, you should have enough to tier two the character with a tier two ticket because you don't want to say, I mean, you could go the full 30 days and save up uh, enough gear, enough BIOS for all of the gear, plus and enough bios for the 150 uh, advancement which you need right here um, alternatively if you don't have the bio sub and you've been grinding it out from the epic quest strap in you're going to be grinding it out for a lot longer uh, getting those two to three bios per day uh, in order to build up you know 400 possibly 300 possibly 400 uh, in order to build up the character's gears and then to take them to tier two there is another option you can use a mega tier 2 ticket and this is what I'm going to be doing in the case for Victorious so I can show you guys and and I can um, showcase the character faster and additionally because I want Dr. Doom real fucking bad uh, and if I delay getting Victorious to tier 2 which was my original plan was to do it slowly and to save my mega tier 2 ticket but I want Dr. Doom to be unlocked uh, for me as soon as Mr. Fantastic is unlocked and that's gonna happen in a couple of days so I really don't have enough time I don't have the 20 days luxury because I just am too impatient and also I want to see how badass this character is so we're gonna go ahead and use a tier 2 mega advancement ticket this is gonna skip everything this skips the leveling process you see it automatically goes from 1 to 60 it automatically masters the character for me I don't have to do anything and I want to illustrate this for you guys so you don't waste any additional uh, resources I don't have to get any of her gears ranked up. They're all at level one. I don't have to touch this stuff. Nothing. 
all I have to do is use the uh, Mega Tier 2 ticket, and that's what makes it so good. It even skips the Tier 2 process, so I save the Black Antimatter, Chaos Nordstones, I save the Gold, and voila. We've got ourselves a Tier 2 Victorious. Now, of course, the stats jump insanely, but they still seem kind of low uh, because we still haven't built the character. So now we get into the character building portion. Um, we can start equipping Uru. Uh, we can level up the skills and we can see what's going on. So we'll start off with the skills because this is kind of the easiest part. What I do, and I've repeated this in yesterday's video, but I'll repeat it again, is I see if the skill has certain effects. Uh, now it deals the same amount of damage as long as I level it up. There's only an additional damage there that goes up, so it's really not worth my gold to level it up. I level it up twice because it's very cheap. The first two levels only cost 200,000 gold. The next one alone costs 200,000 gold. So if you think about it this way, getting the skill from level 1 to, to level 3 is the same as getting it from level 3 to level 4. And there's not that much additional damage going on here that it really justifies going all the way to 6 unless you love the character or unless the skill does something. So in this case, it does bleed damage. You can see 1% additional bleed damage. Again, that's not really enough to justify um, spending more gold, so I'm not going to. But we go on to Cosmic Javelin, and here's where we start getting really spicy. Now, instead of a 35% all attack, all defense, all speed buff, we have 40-40. That's definitely worth leveling up. 5% is worth it. We're gonna go again 5%, again 5%, again 5%. And wow, again, 5%. So what she does is she applies to herself 5 seconds of invincibility and 60% all defense, all attack, and 20% all speed. Now the weird thing is it says 1 second. So we're going to have to test in-game if that actually is 1 second or if it's 1 second that keeps refreshing for the full 5 seconds. If that is the case, if it's a refreshing um, buff and it actually lasts much longer than one second, then you don't want to give the character attack speed on their IS-08 set, because you can see 20% all speed is gigantic. That's going to send her way over the cap automatically, because the, the cap is 130. So that is something to keep in mind. Her last skill, because she only has four active skills, uh, creates a shield that has 10%. Now it jumps up to 15, decreases damage by 20%. So this is a huge difference in the in the levels of the skill. So absolutely, you want to level this all the way because you can see the shields going up, the HP is going up, the increase of max HP is going up, everything's going up. So now, all leveled up, she gets a 60% decrease to all damage, which is insane. She gets an insane 35% shield. Her max HP gets doubled 100%. Uh, and then she also has remove incapacitation. So that's fantastic. Finally, this is very odd. We don't ever see this, but you can level up her passive like Destroyer. So she's very similar to him. And of course, you want to level this up because it increases the chance to penetrate. And I believe it also increases the guaranteed crit rate. So this is a very valuable skill to level up. You want this as high as possible. That's how I determine whether I'm going to level up a skill to 6 or I'm going to leave it at 3. So that's something that you can use yourself if you're finding that you're spending way too much gold. This might be one way that you can save a lot of gold and it will have very little, if any, impact on the way that you play the game and your success. So all, in to all told, uh, her last resort passive gives her a 50% chance to penetrate super armor, and super armor and barrier. She doesn't penetrate immunity or invincibility, only for 3 seconds. And then it also gives her a 60% guaranteed crit rate. That 60% guaranteed crit rate is insane, uh, especially because it's 5 seconds with a 5 second cooldown, so it'll be triggered constantly. Uh, we just have to get her HP below 50%. Speaking of her HP, she's a very unique character because all of her skills uh, deal a percentage of her HP, all of them. Uh, and so because of that, you want to pump up her HP. And actually at tier 2, her passive applies a 30% HP buff to all characters. That's insane. That's so, so good. Uh, and so because of that, we want to bump up her HP. So there's a few different set bonuses we can go ahead with. Uh, I'm going to save you the painful uh, part of actually rolling them with you guys. But uh, you can either go for offensively, Hawk's Eye, or Power of Angry Hulk. I actually do recommend Hawk's Eye in this case because it has 3 HP ISO. Both of these can roll HP, and this is a flat HP ISO, and it also has dodge. And I see a lot of people synergizing dodge and HP, uh, and it makes sense for the character because she also has incredible damage reduction. So when you finally do hit her, you're going to be doing peanuts damage. Power of Angry Hulk is also good because it gives her the ignore defense, and it does give her 3 HP uh, ISO. So you really don't want to go with any of the other sets that don't have 3 uh, because it's just not as effective for maxing out her HP. If you take a look at her gear, 
you can see that uh, she doesn't have cooldown time and ignore dodge. She has them here, but the ignore defense, not ignore dodge, the ignore defense is much lower, it's only half. So while the skill cooldown may not be needed depending on your cards, uh, you may need uh, ignore defense, and that would kind of be the difference between choosing uh, Hawk's Eye or Power of Angry Hulk, whether you need the ignore defense or you need the cooldown. But I think most people will gravitate towards Power of Angry Hulk to shore up that ignore defense blind spot. If you want to go super defensive, which I see quite a few people doing, uh, Binary Power is one to consider because it has max uh, HP and it also has only two, but... It kind of gets a little bit more difficult to get more than two for these defensive ones. Uh, one of the ones that has two as well that's quite good is Drastic Density. It's got Vital and Chaotic, and it also has max HP and ignore defense so that you can worry about other things on your character's gear, on Victorious's gear. So we're going to roll now and see what ISO 8 set we end up getting. And voila, there we have the ISO 8 set that I landed on after just a couple million gold. I got pretty lucky with Drastic Density Enhancement, which I do think is one of the best sets for her. Now, this is still unclear to me whether, for example, the bubble, the shield from her set here does overwrite or um, kind of plays nice or doesn't play nice with her impending victory because she's constantly creating a 35% max HP shield. So does that stack or do they overwrite one another? It's kind of unclear. But additionally, there really isn't a one perfect ISO 8 set for her at least, you know, at first glance. It may end up being that something like Stark Backing that provides a flat heal will be better because she's always going to be or almost go always going to be at an HP deficit because of that 50% of her 100 when she doubles her um, HP or perhaps going with something else altogether. For example, Spider Sense, which also has three uh, HP ISO and provides a massive defensive boost rather than providing anything HP related, but it also gives a max HP buff. So I might actually try to roll Spider Sense in the future and test it out, um, but that is what I rolled for now. And so those are my suggestions between Power of Angry Hulk, Drastic Density, Stark Banking, and maybe even Spider Sense. I know it's a lot. Uh, the obelisk that I ended up going with after testing her without an obelisk is one that has a damage proc. It's a max HP damage proc. I imagine that a double max HP damage proc might be the best for her, uh, but keep in mind that she has very low crit rate. You can see her crit rate is at 27.7, so you kind of have to balance that out. She does have 60% guaranteed crit uh, rate with her last resort passive, so I'm not sure how much crit rate she needs, but it's always nice to have more, especially since she has basically capped crit damage. So it's kind of hard to uh, really understand where to go with this character overall. One thing I did notice through the gameplay and we'll uh, highlight when we jump into it is Outbreak of War has a hidden uh, all defense down that it stacks and it's not listed here on the skill at all, but it makes the skill very, very good and it's easily spammable because as you can see, it's on a three second cooldown with max skill cooldown. So six seconds equals three. I'm just gonna roll with some HP uh, Uru just so that you guys are aware, she doesn't actually need energy attack Uru. So you can leave her energy attack. You don't need energy attack on your cards um, because she doesn't actually do energy damage. I mean, it is energy damage, but it's not of her energy attack. It's of her HP. So you just want to pump up her HP as much as possible. So options for Uru would be things like ignore defense and skill cooldown, of course. Uh, but you could also go for things like dodge. Uh, you could go for crit rate, crit damage, or you could even go for energy uh, or physical defense, or even attack speed. I do think attack speed is quite an important value for her, especially with her third skill, Cosmic Javelin. It takes a long time for those javelins to get thrown, um, and especially with the all speed buff. If it's not always applied, you're going to lack that uh, speed you know, when you're getting started with the skill. But let's jump into, no thank you, let's jump into some gameplay. We're gonna do some world boss. I was testing her out against Thanos, so I wanted to show you guys what the damage looks like. We're gonna dive all the way down to a stage 10 clear, I know, um, but this is just to illustrate. Now, we're gonna be using her, but we're not gonna use her leadership. We're gonna use her with Captain America's leadership, which provides a 30% HP buff, which will buff her damage. And then we're also going to throw in Wasp, which provides an additional 10% buff with her uniform. Also, the Freedom Fighter uh, team up, which is provided by these two, is another 5%. So it's 35 plus 45 additional HP on top of her 30, so 75% additional HP. We're not gonna use any strikers because I just want you guys to see what her damage looks like. 
and um, what it looks like to play as this character because that is kind of the thing. It's, it's quite fun to play as her even though she only has four skills and she from my understanding looks to be pretty tanky um, but I do think as you'll see that the damage is a little bit uh, lackluster and um, it's just something that I don't know how to fix. So I'll kind of, I'll leave my verdict unwritten in a sense because I don't want the final verdict to land on a character who could have end up being extremely meta defining. She definitely has, has sparks and, and kind of bursts of damage, but it's coming almost entirely from her uh, second skill. But you do absolutely need to keep spamming the uh, fourth skill to get that uh, HP stack rolling. But because she doesn't have any heals, you don't have to worry about that. You can see the all defense down buff uh, that, that's kind of an invisible buff being applied when she does her second skill as soon as she lands from those uh, throws. And you can see that I'm able to spam that second skill a lot because of the fact that uh, she has such a low cooldown and because of the fact that she has uh, such a long iframe on it to allow kind of almost continuous spamming which is really really nice so she does have a couple of different tools that make her quite unique and do make her um, quite good in certain situations now the damage here is not bad but keep in mind this is only a stage 10 and this is with kind of an optimal team now yes she has 80,000 HP which is extremely high and so because of that um, you know it, she is harder to kill and she does have a nice instant iframe on the second skill uh, and she's got that but what happens when, for example, uh, there's debuff and you can't stack all of those uh, all defense down? What happens when her fourth skill or th her third skill rather gets her caught doing a very long iframe? There is a bit of awkwardness and she can get guard broken because she doesn't have super armor um, to the character uh, unless you build her, you know, with guard break immunity, for example, on an obelisk, uh, which then sacrifices more damage because you need that ma that max HP um, and yeah, it just, it seems as though there's a, there, there may be a piece missing, uh, or I, I may be missing a piece from a kind of an op optimal build for this character that really takes advantage of uh, everything she's bringing to the table. But it's it's pretty wild to see she's got almost 160,000 HP, and I could make that even higher if I had better HP on my cards. Uh, and that's in World Boss, where there's no additional HP buffs being applied. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but it is a stage 10, it is without strikers, so I think she could per perhaps do a stage 20 with uh, very generous strikers if she got lucky, but uh, in the testing that I did, it didn't seem that PvE content was going to be her bread and butter. So I don't want to uh, stress it too much because it doesn't seem like that's where she's going to shine. Where I think that she may shine is in PvP, and particularly things like Timeline Battle, Alliance Conquest, and uh, Alliance Tournament, because it multiplies your HP. So you can see here, she's rocking a base HP of 125%, and when she pops her fifth skill, it goes up to 250%. The problem with PvP is, well, if, at least for Timeline Battle, you have to play manually, and because she only has four skills, she has fewer weapons available to her, and because you're building her in a specific way, um, if you're stacking lots of HP, you may not have built her with guard break immunity. And if you don't build her with guard break immunity, she gets completely rocked by specific characters uh, like Quicksilver and Deadpool who have lots of hits that can guard break and penetrate super armor and things like that. So I think absolutely for sure she would need uh, guard break immunity uh, if she was going to have uh, a PvP presence on your roster. Um, whether it's for Alliance Conquest or anything like that, autoplay or manual play, it's it's an absolute necessity. She only has a couple of iframes, and she can't really get away with uh, canceling other characters' iframes. Although she can survive, you can see she survived almost to the end of uh, Quicksilver's attacks. Uh, wow. Okay, sure. So I'll have to do more testing to see uh, if a Guard Break Community Obelisk really does enough uh, justice to the character for uh, PvP and if it makes her a viable target. It may be that I've overestimated the character's uh, strength and that she's more of a support type for Doctor Doom. We're obviously gonna have to wait and see because Doctor Doom isn't out yet, so that is something that is a possibility. However, uh, you know, disappointing it might be to some people that she isn't, uh, uh, you know, a character that can rock on her own, but she's kind of just there to um, support Doctor Doom. She does have a nice shield, and you can see she survived for quite a long time with such low HP because she had the, a heavy, heavy shield. 
and that may be something that becomes more amplified in game modes like Alliance Tournament and Conquest that stack the HP higher because even though her base HP was so low, because of that shield, that kind of light blue bar above her health, uh, because that shield was there and it kept refreshing due to her IS weight set and due to her fifth, her fourth skill continuously being cast, uh, she's able to survive for long periods of time at very low health. Um, so it's still unclear. I, I want to do this character more justice and I want to uh, get a more accurate picture of this character, but it's it's difficult. Uh, Netmarble has really thrown us a curveball here with this character dealing damage based on the HP. My gut instinct is telling me that the damage she does is a little bit too low with the, the max percentage being 25%. If you think about it, 25% of any number is going to be really low, and because she can't uh, benefit from traditional buff effects, you know, buff effects from an ISO weight set, buff effects from a CTP of transcendence or patience or any kind of buff effects for people who have upwards of 80 or 90% attack on their cards. You know, I've got 43 all attack and 23 or 31 energy attack. So she's missing almost 75% attack bonus that she can't get um, because it just doesn't help. And I only have 9% max HP on my cards. Are you going to rebuild your entire card set? Because you can get 40 to 50% max HP. Uh, are you going to do that for one character? No. So I really do love the fact that Netmarble has created a new character with unique uh, aspects and unique skill effects and the fact that they have multiple passives rather than five skills. I think everything about this character's design is great. Uh, I just you want to have a better way of implementing the character to the game itself without breaking the rest of the game for the rest of the characters whether it's in the way you design your cards and those card effects or it's in the way and the types of game modes that you're playing because i do want to see victorious excel in all game modes so let me know what you think of the character highlight let me know what you think of victorious and the fantastic four epic quest so far subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you again tomorrow take care